Good evening. Good evening, me teacher. Good evening, me guys. Okay, we are going to start at the second session of this last week. Um, we are just uh, going to have two more days and we are going to end the uh, module. So we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday. That in that case is um, the topic related to past. So we are going to see the other uh, two chances that we have left. We are going to continue with that uh, part. And also we are going to um, see idioms about past or phrases in that case, because idioms are like phrases that we can use to express different ideas um, using new sentences. And we are going to see some idioms that we can use um, when we are talking about past, because you know that in the United States or many um, like native speakers like to use this kind of idioms like we do in Spanish um, that we have a specific phrases for uh, different situations. So in that case, they like to do that, um, that thing too. So in that case, they have like a specific uh, phrases that they can use to express like different ideas with a different statement. So we are going to continue with the topic of the past and then we're going to see the idioms. And if we have time, we're going to uh, have a review of vocabulary. And also we are going to do the knowledge, the knowledge check plus a vocabulary that we have on the platform. But we are going to continue with the topic. So. Give me a moment because I need to put the screen and also we are going to continue with the part that we have left yesterday that was like the usage of the, the tense that we were like studying yesterday. So we are going to continue. So in this case, we have the document in which we have the information. Um, in this case, yesterday we were like having some information about the past. And in this case, we have past tenses and we were talking about the simple past that is the number one. And then we have here number two. There is the past continuous. In this case, uh, we have some information related to the past continuous. Uh, we have the structures and we have also some examples. And that was the last part that we were working with the, um, the past continuous. In this case, we are going to uh, talk about the function of the past continuous. So in that case, we are going to begin right now because we have just one hour. And you know that in some uh, cases, the time is going to run very fast and we're not going to have enough time to complete all the information that we have for today. So we are going to continue with the function And in this case, we have that the past continuous describes action or events in a time before now, which began in the past and was still going on at the time of speaking. 
In other words, it expresses an unfinished or incomplete, incomplete action in the uh, past. So the difference between the simple past and the past continuous is, in this case, we are going to use this structure for um, actions that begin in the past, but they uh, didn't finish at that time. In that case, they are like actions that are happening in this moment where, when we are talking. Uh, we can say, for example, I was on um, an English course, but you know that in this moment it is not finished. In this case, we are all in, in the course um, also. So in that case, it's a, an action that happened in the past, but in that case, didn't finish at that time, like in the simple past that in that case, we are talking about complete actions in the past, but in this case, um, there are actions beginning in the past and continuing in the present. And maybe it's going to end in this moment, but um, you know, what is the, the, the specific meaning for the past continues? So we have here the information. So here we have the specification that it expressed an unfinished or incomplete action in the past. So in that case, we are doing that action in this moment. So in this case, it is used and we have here, it is used often to describe the background in a story written in the past. For example, the sun was shining and the birds were singing as the elephant came out of the jungle. The other animals were relaxing in the shade of the trees, but the elephant moved very quickly. She was looking for her baby and she didn't notice the hunter who was watching her through his binoculars. When the shot ran out, she was running towards the river. So in that case, we can use the past continuous to uh, talk about the background in a story. In that case, is to um, introduce uh, some action, some specific action in some stories that we can uh, see through the words of someone that is reading that uh, story. So in that case, we can imagine the situation that the situations, I mean, that are happening in that a scene so or in that a part of the story so we say that it is used often to describe the background in a story written in the past. And we, I'm going to write the the example. So we have the example here about the story of the elephant. And it says, the sun was shining 
In that case, you have that idea of the background because in that case, you can see the sun shining in that moment. So we have the sun up in the sky. The sun was shining and the birds were singing. So we can imagine the sound of the birds singing in that moment. As the elephant came out of the jungle, came out of the jungle. The other animals were relaxing. in the shade of the trees. But the elephant moved very quickly. She was looking for her baby. And she didn't notice the hunter who was watching her through his When the shot ran out, she was running. But where's the river? So through this um, short a like paragraph related to this story, we can see different elements in this case that can give us um, like an idea about the things that were happening in that moment. So in that case, we can like imagine what uh, the animals were doing in that uh, space because in that case they it's it's saying that they were like relaxing uh, because the sun was shining the birds were singing and but we have something different the part of the elephant that was looking for her baby and she was desperate and also we have another bad thing that uh, in that case we have the hunter that was looking through the binoculars to the elephant. And also, um, sure, the elephant, but in that case, we have just a short part of the story. Then we can use um, the, uh, the past continues to describe an unfinished action that was interrupted by another event or action. So the first use that we can give to the past continuous is to describe the background in a story written in the past tense. The second one is to describe an unfinished action that was interrupted by another event or action. In this case, I'm going to move this one and I'm going to put number one because we're going to, to have the number two also. This day we are going to move a little bit this one. Yes, like this. Then we have number two. It says to describe an unfinished 
action that was interrupt by another event or action. And we have an example. This example say, I was having a beautiful dream when the alarm, uh, when the alarm clock rang. So in that case, we were having um, a situation. In that case, we were having a beautiful dream, but another action happened and stopped that uh, first situation and we have another one. So in that case, uh, we can say that, um, that was an unfinished action because we were having a dream. And now we're not going to continue that dream because in that case, it's not like a movie or a TV show. In that case, we're going to have another kind of uh, dreams. So we're not going to continue that dream. But in this case, we are talking about that situation in which we are having one situation and then another one happened. So we have the example I was having a beautiful dream, but the alarm clock run. Then number three, to express a change of mind, to express a change of mine. And we have an example. And this one said, I was going to spend the day at the beach, but I decided to go on excursion instead. I was going to spend the day at the beach. But I've designed to go on an excursion instead. So in these cases, when we are changing our mind uh, or uh, making a different decision about a situation that we were planning, and in this case, we say, ah, oh, I was going to spend um, the day at the beach, but at the end, I decide to change my plans and I'm going to go to another place. So in that case, when you change your mind and you have another decision and change the first decision that you have, in that case, you are going to use the structure or the past continuous. And the last one that is number four, is with wonder to make a very polite request. Then we have an example. And it says, I was wondering If you could babysit for me tonight. So in this case, it's like I am thinking, or I was thinking, I was. Yes, I was thinking if you could babysit for me tonight. I was wondering if you could babysit for me tonight. So in that case, when you have this kind of very polite request uh, for someone else, you're going to use the uh, past continuous with wonder. And we're going to see the last examples because we're going to change the structure. 
So in this case, I'm going to write four examples. And we have, they were waiting for the bus when the accident happened. They were waiting for the bus when the accident happened. Next one, Caroline was skiing when she broke her leg. When we arrived, he was having a bath. When we arrived, he was having a bath. In the last one, when the fire started, I was watching television. When the fire started, I was watching TV or television. So in that case, we are going to end the part of the past continuous and we're going to continue with the past perfect. So number three, past perfect. The past perfect tense in English is composed of two parts. Again, we are going to have two different parts. We are going to have the past tense of the verb to have, that in this case is had, plus the past participle of the main verb. So in this case, we are going to use had and the past participle of the main verb. So we are going to see the example with um, the structure. In this case, we have the subject plus had plus past participle. And we have in the subject, we, we had, decided. So that's the construction of this uh, tense in which we're going to use had and we're going to use also the past participle of the verb that, that in that case you can see that uh, this one is a very, this is a regular verb. So in that case you are using ed at the end. So we're going to see the the structures through some examples. For the affirmative sentence, we have she, that is the subject, had, that is the second part, given, that is the verb in past participle. For negative, we have, we hadn't, we hadn't, or we can say had not. We hadn't asked. Or the interrogative. We have first had, 
they, that is the subject, have they arrived? And we have the interrogative negative. In this case, hadn't or had not. You, that is the subject, finished. That is the past participle of the verb. So I'm going to move because we need to separate the different structure. So in this case, let me move a little bit. Yes, in this case, we have the four different structures that we can have in this um, in this tense that is the past perfect form. And we have uh, some examples. We have an ephemery that it said, I had decided. I hadn't decided. And the last one had I decided. And the negative one had an I decided. So what are the functions? that uh, we can have for this structure. So we are going to see the past perfect functions. And it says that the past perfect refers to a time earlier than before now. It is used to make it clear that one event happened before another in the past. It does not matter which event is mentioned first, the tense make it clear which one happened first. In this case, when we are using these tense, you are talking about two different situations in the past, but one of these situations um, happened before the other one. And it, it doesn't matter if you mention one or the other, in that case, you are going to find which one is the older or which one is the one that happened before. So we are going to have in the examples, event A or event B to make the difference between the different events that we can have in past. So we're going to have the general information and then we're going to see the examples referring to the event A and event B to notice which one is the older.
So we are going to see the different examples and we are going to mark the situations. So I'm going to add a table in this case because we need to make a, the difference between the situations. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. So in this case, we have John had gone out. And then when I arrive in the office, and here we have event A and event B. So in that case, when we arrive at the office, John had gone out or John had gone out when I arrived at the office. So he was left before I go to the office. Then we have the second one. I had saved my document. I had saved my document before the computer crashed. Before the computer crashed. So in this case, first I had saved my document. So this is event A. And then my computer crashed. This is event B. Then we have another one. When they arrive, when they arrive, we had already start cooking. We had already started cooking. So this one is event A. And this one is event B. And the last one, he was very tired. He was very tired because he hadn't slept well. Because he hadn't slept well. So this one is the event A and I mean, event B, and this one is event A. Because he hadn't slept well, he was very tired. So in that case, we're given like the explanation first, and then we're going to say what he is uh, like. And the last part of this one, is the past perfect plus just. In this one, just is used with the past perfect to refer to an event that was only a short time earlier than before and now. So maybe this event happened in a couple of uh, minutes or some minutes ago or in an hour ago or something like that. And in that case, we're just going to use um, the word just. So in this case, just is used with the past perfect to refer to an event that was only a short time earlier than before now. 
and and we have some examples. The train had just left when I arrived at the station. The train had just left when I arrived at the station. She had just left the room when the police arrived. In the last one, I had just put the washing out when it started to rain. So in that case, we have the different examples in which we can use they were just when something uh, happened in a couple of minutes before the situation. So in that case, we're just going to use just. Now, um, we have one uh, tense more, but uh, for, this, um, for this tense, I have an exercise for you. So in this case, you are going to write two different uh, statements in which you are going to apply the event A and event B. So in that case, you can write like this, event A on the chat, and you can write your uh, first part of the statement, and then event B, And you're going to uh, write the second part of the statement. Así que vamos a hacer en el ejercicio dos es, eh, oraciones completas que lleven evento A y evento B. Vamos a escribirlo en el chat, evento A, evento B, y escribimos las dos partes de nuestra eh, oración. Tienen que estar relacionadas ¿verdad? la una con la otra. Y voy a ir eh, eligiendo algunas para ponerlas como ejemplo. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to create your statements with um, event A and event B, and then we're going to see the example. So I'm going to put the, the table here in which you're going to see the different examples that we have on the table about event A and event B. So we have a couple of minutes to create uh, those uh, sentences. And when you have your statements done, you are going to write it on the chat. And then I'm going to read them and choose a couple of them to write the example. So let's begin right now.
Okay, I'm going to start reading it, the examples that we have on the chat. And I'm going to start writing some of them on the document because we have a couple of, of examples. So let's see. I have Yes, I had just came home when started raining. We have the first one, then event A and event B. In event A, it says, I had just eaten when my husband called me. I had just eaten. when my husband called me. Event B. Mm. I have just finished my studies. Mm, we can say degree in this case, when I got a job. Then she had to finish her homework when her neighborhood grows some bushes. She had just finished her homework when her neighbor Throw some event A. My family was tired. In this case, I'm going to use this one as a event B. My family was tired and event A
we have trouble okay. I have just finished my homework. When my mom called me. So here we have some examples that you wrote on the chat. So thank you for your participation. And we have here, even A, I had just came home, even to B, when it started raining. Then even A, I had just eaten when my husband called me. She had danced with her friends when the fire started. I had just finished my degree when I got a job. She had just finished her homework when her neighbor brought some pupusas. My family, in this case, my family was tired because we had traveled today. I had just finished my homework when my mom called me. And the last one, when the class started, I had just finished my homework. So now for the last uh, couple of minutes, we're going to see the tense number four, that is the last one. And this one is past perfect continuous. This one said that the past perfect continuous is composed Again, of two elements. And in these two elements, we have the number one, that is the past perfect of the verb to be. The past perfect of the verb to be. That this one is had been. plus the present participle. That in this case is the base form of the verb plus ing. And we have an example. And in this case we have, I mean, we have the structure and in this one, we have the subject plus had been, that is in this case, the past perfect of the verb to be plus the present participle that is the base plus ing and in this case is verb with ing. And for the example, I is the subject had been And then we have our verb with ing. And it's walking. I have been walking. And we're going to see the structures with examples. Affirmative. She has 
she had been trying. Negative. We hadn't, we hadn't, or had not been sleeping. Interrogative. Have you been eating? And for the interrogative negative, At the day, been living. And those are the structures that we can use for the A past perfect continuous. And in this case, we have the functions. So in this case, the past perfect continuous corresponds to the present perfect continuous, but with reference to a time earlier than before now. Again, we are more interested in the process, not in the way the actions happen or like the order of the action. In this case, we are interested in the process. And we have some examples. And these ones are just, because to, we have just two minutes to end the session. So in the examples we have, had you been waiting long before the taxi arrived? Had you been waiting long before? The taxi arrived. Second one, we have been trying to open the door for five minutes when Jane found her key. And the last one, it have been raining it have been raining hard for several hours. And the streets were very wet. So there we have the examples and we finish with the part of the past. 
So in this case, we have complete the four, um, we can say tenses in past. So we have all the information at there. And we are going to end the session here because uh, it's time to end the session. And remember that uh, tomorrow we are not going to have the session, but we are going to uh, see each other on Thursday. So we are going to finish the session here and we are going to see each other on Thursday. Have a really good night and see you on Thursday. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.